Hi, everyone. I'm Nell Bong Jensen, for those I haven't met yet. Um, thanks so much for being here tonight. It's really been a wonderful week. Um, I'm going to talk just for a couple minutes, and then we'll show you some of the things we've been playing with at Camp Fringe. Um, a few thank yous first. I want to say a big thank you to Fringe Arts um, for this space and time, and especially the snacks in the dressing room, which go a really long way when you're working with teenage boys. So thank you for that. Um, I also want to say thank you to all the parents who are here tonight who have made this week possible with transportation, with feeding people, with schedules and pickup. Thank you very much. We could not do it without you. Um, and thank you also to my incredibly generous creative team. They're not up here with me, but I just want to shout out Mel, Brad, Eva, Johanna, and Dante um, for being here this week working on this project. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about what this piece that's tentatively titled Boy Project is after. Um, a lot of my work is about breaking the binary of who gets to be an artist and who doesn't. Um, so this project really came out of one I did in the past with a lot of the members of this creative team called The Caregivers, where I worked with people who are home health aides and hospice workers in Philadelphia. Um, and together we devised an original show that premiered last year. And we all became really interested in the ways um, that we can have Philadelphia get to have a theatrical experience who may not identify as professional actors um, and interested in what they would have to say as themselves on a stage and how to structure that in a theatrical way. Um, so of all the populations to work with, I became really interested in the population of teenage boys in Philadelphia, particularly at this time in 2019 where I feel like questions of masculinity are being examined, challenged, redefined, and thinking about my own perspective um, and then how there's this this whole generation of people who will be defining it in the future. So this week was really an opportunity for us to work with these young people um, and hear their own thoughts about the topic of masculinity and gender in general. Um, I like to think of a final show as a cake that's being baked. And tonight you're just going to see some ingredients and some flavors um, that we've been playing with a lot of this week has just been about beginning conversations and developing comfort with each other. And so you'll see some games and some exercises that may or may not end up in the final show. Um, I'm happy to talk to you more about it after in the reception. Um, but we're going to start by just showing you a way that we like to start the day. On. One of the great pleasures of this week was getting to know um, this range of nine individuals and the stories they have to tell. Um, we're going to show you a little bit of an exercise we did about summing up their lives to this point in five moments um, and also developing a, a physical vocabulary with each other. We'll move um, from sharing a few of these life stories into um, some gestures of masculinity that they created. I believe submarines are 
underneath. Hello, I'm Rita Hedara, and these are my five major life events. So, um, on March 15th, 2004, at 3.59 a.m., I was born here in Philadelphia. And yeah, that's my first one, even though I don't remember it. You know, it's important because I'm here now. Um, my second major event was in 2009 when I visited Morocco and I got to see my grandmother, no, like not knowing that that was going to be the last time I would see her. So she passed a year later, but it was good to know that I could get to see her once at least in my life. Um, my third major event is my father getting DVT, AKA deep vein thrombosis. So it's, a, it's like a blood clot that can restrict blood from flowing into your major organs. Um, and he didn't figure out about it until a week later, so he ended up in the hospital for about a week. And me thinking he was going to pass, it was one of my biggest fears, but it was also one of my biggest motivators because it motivated me to become more mature and feel like I would have to be the man in the house. Uh, number four is, it's sort of silly, but Trump being elected president because uh, it was the first time I've sort of seen a nation divide. And then my last one is just me scrolling through Instagram and seeing a girl named Emily. She's not my crush or anything, but she had really like a really nice style and I decided to text her and she changed my clothing style and she helped shape my music taste today. And yeah, that's it. Hello, my name is Damon, and these are my five important events in life. So, my first one is going to a new school. In second grade, I changed my school from Mitchell Elementary to Cook was Hicken, and I changed after getting bullied, and that was not very fun, but it was still a good school, and so was Cook was a Hicken, and I stayed there until eighth grade, and I loved it, and I tried everything there. So, then my second grade event was in the fourth grade. I had my appendix taken out because it was about to rupture. <laughs> and I could have died, but I didn't. So, you know, that that was very fun for me. Uh, had a big scar, so. My third major event is when I was in the fifth grade, it was around Thanksgiving. It was when my father passed, and it kind of forced me to change, and it was kind of early, because I was about 10 or 11, but it was okay. My fourth event is actually pretty recent. It was in December or January of this year. I won most improved player for squash after only doing it for one year. So I think that was pretty important in my life. Yeah, and then my fifth one is my first job. I started June something and you know, now I make money. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Hi, I'm Elias, and these are my five events. My first event is going to uh, a school in kindergarten and meeting my best friend, who would be my best friend uh, until fourth grade, uh, where I had to switch schools. Um, my second is taking public transportation for the first time. I took public transportation because I needed to get to my new school and uh, <laughs> uh, and the th my third event is uh, in what well, else about 11 I think 11. Let's just go with 11, okay. All right, uh, when I was 11, I went to a, a sleepaway camp called Camp Lebanon in Lebanon, New Jersey, and I met this person, and uh, he is a, his name is uh, D DW, or Damian Wade, and he is a transgender male, um, and he really inspired me to uh, become who I am now. Fourth grade, around the same time, in in Camp Lebanon, we had this uh, we had this thing called the Mighty Mighty Mini Marvel, um, and it's 
basically just a nerd circle where we would sit around and nerd about Marvel. Um, sounds awesome, right? Uh, and uh, I was Baby Thor, uh, DW was Spider Child, and um, uh, another friend was Hawkeye. My fifth is changing my pronouns. Um, I was a uh, boy and I switched to being non-binary um, and my pronouns changed from being he, him to they, them and it was, it was a good uh, experience in my life. I felt very at peace with myself. Thank you. Lately, I've been, I've been thinking. So this is a song that me and Dante wrote. Uh, Don we had a story circle, I think the second day of rehearsals here. And uh, Dante took notes there, and we derived the lyrics from those notes. And it's called, What It Means to Be Me. I was like a stone Already grown before you knew me He said you're on your own No, you don't get the things you give back truly And I was scared, but you never knew that You said strength would get me through that unknown It'll make you grown Oh, I feel the pressure under your wing I'll fall back, fight back, push between The words you said and what they mean to what it means to be me They expect me to provide When there's no one left to care for the likes of me I feel the pressure trembling beneath And I was scared but you never knew that You said strength would get me through that unknown It'll make you grow Oh, I feel the pressure 
pressure under your wing I'll fall back, fight back, push between the words I hear and what they mean to me and what it means to be me So, I don't really have a talent, so I'm gonna pick a question. What is feminism? So, I think that feminism is like uh, the belief that women should have the same rights as men uh, in like every aspect of rights, like not just like being able to do the same things, but also being looked at the same way and not like considered someone different. Uh, even like, I don't know, like if you're looking at two people and like you had to choose someone to do something, like you wouldn't choose because they're a woman or a man. He's tall. <laughs> Tell us about a time someone hurt your feelings. Um, I guess the times where my feelings get hurt the most is when someone says something about me that's not true or says that I'm someone that I'm not. So, like, whether that be Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi. It's me again. Um, I do have a talent, surprisingly. Uh, I'm going to freestyle beatbox. This is beatboxing without any music. Uh, I'm going to start off with Boots and Cats. And... Uh, gonna progress it. <clears throat> boots and cats and 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 bo
I know how it starts. Trust me, I've been broken before. So my question is, what is consent? So I just believe it just just being allowed to do something from like a guardian or an adult or something like that. What does toxic masculinity mean? Um, damn it. Uh, I don't know how to answer this question. What advice would you give to your parents of teenagers? Um, advice I would give probably my parents were to keep doing what they're doing because they're doing a good job so far. Uh, this is how do you get ready in the morning? Now, there's a lot of videos out there that portray that we do this whole routine, but everybody knows that it's true that we spend about half our morning just trying to get out of bed first. And then we spend the second half about, we spend a bit brushing our teeth, you know, not a lot. <laughs> then we grab something to eat and then we have to head out the house to do what we need to do. But if we don't have anything to do in the day, then we just stay asleep. And yeah, that's about it. So I'm back. But I'm not going to answer any questions or do a talent. I'm here to talk about how a young man shaves. So thank you for the music, Dante. Um, so shaving. Uh, there is a point in every young man's life where the fuzz on their cheeks or under their nose, it's, it, it's getting out of hand. You gotta get rid of it. And the shaving, it's less of the whole learning how to shave experience because it's not that hard, come on. But it's more of the idea that shaving is something that a man does. So once you go from a, young, from a boy to a young man to a man, that transitional period being a young man, where most of us are, is where we're learning how to shave. So how a young man shaves. A uh, young man is going to hold out his left hand. He's going to grab the shaving cream and he's going to put it into his hand. Now he's going to rub his hands together, lather them up, and he's going to apply a shaving cream on his face, wherever he needs to get rid of hair. So normally like along the jawline, under the sideburns, chin, under here, a little mustache area, that kind of thing. Right? Next, young man, he's going to look at it, make sure he got everybody covered. He's going to get his razor. He's going to wet it if he has water and then he's gonna start to shave. So he's gonna try to remove the shaving cream. Uh, he can't go too fast, can't go too slow, because if you go too fast, you're gonna miss stuff or cut yourself, and you go too slow, you're gonna miss stuff or cut yourself. So you have to find that area in the middle where you're going in between. Um, in long strokes, trying to get everything you can. Uh, and so then you wash your face, get all the shaving cream off, admire yourself in the mirror, and that's how you shave. Thank you. five events in my life and yeah first event was when I went to kindergarten and met my class well we are my class doesn't really move a far, far far from me 
we stayed in the same class all the way until eighth grade graduation. And that's about it. Another event of my time was when I went on this um, trip with my mom and my mom's friend. And we saw this um, play put together, well not play, but movie reenactment of Thriller. And me and my friend, we just kept laughing the whole time. And my mom got pretty mad at that, so. Another event was when my cousin Nico was born, and now we just, we're like, we're the same person. We just do everything together. We brought Nintendo Switches together. We do a lot together. Third event was when I got my dog. Um, when I first met my dog, it was scary, and then my mom went to go walk my dog and she had fell <laughs> trying to walk my dog and I just thought it was funny, so. <laughs> Last event was when I met my nephew and he just beats me up all the time, so that's, that's pretty much it. So another question. The question I got is, how can you imagine your life when you're 40? And so after I gave it some thought, I just. <laughs> so after I gave it some thought, I was just like, I wouldn't want to be you no know, crazy billionaire or have like all these cars. I would just want to have a, a well-paying job so I'm able to provide for my family, have a couple kids, um, you know, a good wife, be able to take my family on like a lot of vacations and stuff like that. Thank you.